Tonight, we talk of X's and hexes. Ubuntu Mate shows more progress. NVIDIA still hasn't pulled a summer. And Ryzen 2 has sprung a leak. Mm, that's right, it's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and... Uh, Talk about some of the cool things going on in the world of Penguin Land. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week by, can I get, yep, get it right, uh, my co-host, you know him, you love him, Mr. Pedro. Hello. Uh, what's going on, man? It's, uh, you, you, you survived this blizzard, you survived the flood, mm-hmm. you survived eating cereal for breakfast. I mean, what? Is- <laughs> yeah, I'm still eating uh, cereal for breakfast, so uh, it, it, that might still happen. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, anything new going on in your world? Uh, not really. Just uh, waiting on Amazon to uh, oh, yeah. dispatch my toy. Oh. I want to play with my toy. Man, it, it's so brutal on Amazon. <laughs> Amazon giveth, but oh, sometimes it takes a sweet time. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing really new to report over here. The internet's kind of stabled out, and I know it's about to explode now that I've said that. Um, I guess I can say good guy charter because they reversed a BS charge. When we got everything set up for the uh, almost, they, it's like we could give you a gigabit, but we're going to throttle it connection. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just had a bunch of extra fees tacked on that, whatever. And I called him up and they're like, yo, uh, all right, we can reverse that. I didn't ask them. He's like, even the guy was like, yeah, okay, we need to take at least one of these off. And they did, so good on that. Not Linux-related, but yeah. it helps us bring you this nonsense. And speaking of nonsense, BleachBit 2.0 is ready for public consumption. Indeed. It's uh, it's a serious update. Uh, I was reading through the, uh, the release notes, and it's like, okay, so the general bits, there's some fixes there, and then specific to Linux... It's like, oh, yeah, we no longer mess with your RPMs and your APTs and uh, GTK theme caches and the thumbnails and everything else. And I'm going through the list. It's like, that uh, that reads a lot like reasons not to use Bleach Bit. Mm. I don't know, man. There's, yeah. uh, there's a couple of things. This is 2.0. It's out. Uh, what is Bleach Bit? I had to look this up. Why, well, yes, I did. <laughs> It frees disk space, reduces the size of backups. I'm reading off their web zone here. Uh-huh. Maintain your privacy, improve system performance by vacuuming the Firefox database. Right. And prepare the whole disk image. Now, this sounds kind of kind of useful. Prepare the whole disk images for compression mm-hmm. if you're going to be ghosting something and or VM wiping the free disk space. This uh, is like cache cleaning software with the GUI, maybe a question mark? Uh, yeah. But it's uh, it's also very dangerous because, okay, BleachBit is also available for Windows, and if you've ever used like one of those temporary file removers or one of those registry optimizers for Windows, you know that those often introduce more problems that they actually fix. And, you know, EXT4, BTRFS, for all the faults that they may have, slowing down over time is not one of them. Yes, if you have a slow hard drive, you're inevitably going to slow down over time because there's more stuff to search through. But eh, we live in the age of SSDs. Bleach Bit isn't something the average Linux user should be running, in my opinion. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. It also offers file shredding, which mm-hmm. has been around forever, and that's just writing over the same sec- you know, just really yeah. kicking the uh, SSD and the junk if you're on that. Uh, if you have discard for SSDs, that's what it does. <laughs> it resets the, the flash. Possibly, but uh, if you wanted to be super secure, but then again, if you wanted to be super secure, you probably don't want to use bleach bit. You want to use um, bullets. Yeah, that, that's also very good. A drill. drill. Yes. <laughs> also a close second on that one. Um, but I, if it makes you feel better, it doesn't look like it harms anything. And I know a lot of people moving over from Windows, they want things they're familiar with, like the little blankets, like registry cleaners mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And if it provides them with a false sense of security that uh, helps them continue using Linux, I say more power <laughs> to them. Um, yeah. 
I don't know what this next thing we're about to talk about. Is this a real issue or is this just somebody being grumpy about names? It's, uh, well, it's someone being grumpy about names and uh, whether or not certain forks are going to be maintained and whether or not the fallout of, in the case that they're not maintained, uh, he is probably going to have to deal with the fallout because people are going to blame him for some reason. And uh, this is from Tinkping's blog. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he is the uh, current maintainer of Hexchat, with an H, uh, which as you may know, is a fork of XChat without the H. Um, and XChat itself, it's been, according to him, roughly eight years uh, since they've had any releases. And XChat, on the other hand, has been actively maintained and they've been uh, going out of their way to fix all the CV security exploits, fix all the bugs that they can. And then... Someone else came along and created XChat, not the original one. They forked HexChat, took those uh, patches, and, well, basically applied them to um, the old, old XChat. So he is, uh, well, there's a little bit of ego here, because he's saying, yeah, I know the code base. I've been through it over and over and over. I've fixed many bugs. I've fixed many security exploits. Uh, and the original uh, creator would have to brush up on the code to keep up with them. So <laughs> there, there's a little bit of ego here. But yeah, it's uh, it's about, you know, forking everything. Well, I think if one of the points that could language. be made with this is this could lead to confusion because... <laughs> Also, yes. You're not really getting XChat. You're getting something with a couple of backported pack. You, you should, people, don't don't use XChat. Okay? Mm -hmm. let, let it go. Just let it go. Use XChat if you're going to be... You can use Bitch... Is BitchX still around? I saw Linux. Oh, right. yes. BitchX is still around and it still works. <laughs> if, it gets, if you're living the terminal lowly life, that's the way to go. Hey, man. If it still works. Uh, yeah, just... The moral of this entire story is please you use Hexchat because he's he's 100% right in saying that, you know, Hexchat's just, it's not maintained. And it, mm -hmm. when you have the developer of a fork, the Hexchat telling you this, like, I know that I, I know Hexchat better than anyone else. So, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe heed those words. Okay, are you ready for the 2018 Mate Challenge? Ooh, well, uh, I don't know if I am, because apparently there's yet more progress. Yes. Uh, Martin Wimpress, you may know him, you may love him. I know I do. Okay, uh, okay, hang on. He... I, hang, I'm just going to tap tap the brakes on this. Martin, you were banned from using emojis for a full <laughs> week, because this, this, <laughs> this is ridiculous, man. There's quite a few, yes. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interject. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's uh, it's about the uh, 1804 LTS mate that is coming along. Uh, oh, look, looks like, looks like there's an empty. Um, they have mate desktop 120, which we talked about last week, um, which is uh, it's good to see because there are a lot of improvements. High DPI support, dynamic scaling. Uh, it uh, supports DRI3 and X presence. So if you are using the Mesa drivers, uh, even the NVIDIA drivers. Performance in games will probably see an increase, especially if you're using the Intel drivers. That's where it's the mo most noticeable. Um, they have uh, improved the global menu and the Mate HUD. They improved the uh, dock applet, which is something I very much enjoy about Mate, which is basically dock bar X for the Mate panel. Mm -hmm. uh, the artwork, the Martin says that they're no longer shipping uh, Mate backgrounds by default, and instead they're using some high-quality wallpapers from Unsplash. So, yeah. I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's one of the things I'm looking at that kind of got me a little excited was the Mate images are going to be available with a Raspberry Pi around the time 1804.1 is out. And uh, emo emojis aside, Martin, <laughs> I think I will take the 2018 Mate Challenge because, whew, I took it in 2017 and it was a hot mess because... Uh, oh, there's also the uh, minimal uh, installation, which is something if you don't really like the default uh, apps that uh, Ubuntu Mate came with for some reason. Mm -hmm. Now you can get the minimal installation, 
you run that and you install only what you want and there's a uh, minimal cleanup to do after that so you can just set your system up from there and that is uh well basically bringing fedora to the ubuntu world <laughs> that's the thing well you know sometimes you just want to install the desktop manager like me and yeah. even xfce fortunately gives you the option of not installing all the add-ons the extra features mm -hmm. like i don't want all that cruft and it's definitely good it's there i, I look forward to breaking it in new and interesting ways <laughs> what do we got up next man up next we have linux from scratch yes um uh, they've uh been in the news lately there was a couple of ours well the one rc that came out um earlier in uh, february and uh on the 2nd of march they released version 8.2 and they say, oh, uh, in total, 34 packages were updated since last release. And at first thought, I was like, yeah, that's that seems a bit low. And then I remembered, oh yeah, this is uh, this is Linux from scratch we're talking about. 34 packages is about all you need to get it running. <laughs> well, it's Linux from scratch, man. For those of you who consider Gentoo just a little too mainstream, um, mm -hmm. that's uh, that it. I do have that right, correct? This is roll your own. Yeah, this is Linux from scratch. You get the base uh, Linux install that you need and everything else, audio, video, desktop environment. Basically, it's if Arch decided to basically remove all the aids, not the disease, the helping bits, and said, nope, you sort it out, you do it yourself. This is, uh, this makes or break people uh, if they're trying to quote unquote learn Linux. We've had that discussion last I know, week. I don't know, man. I mean, would you <laughs> describe setting that up? Isn't this like installing BusyBox with a bunch of extra steps? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> now, to be fair, they do offer uh, different books. Uh, there's the basic one, which is just the Linux from scratch, if you would, uh, as you would expect it. And there's also the like the developer one, which comes with the development uh, tools installed and Python and a couple of other things. But yeah, it's um, it's Linux from scratch. It's good to see that it's still around and still being actively developed. It's uh, it's always a fun project, and if you can get it running, heck, so this uh, so this is a screenshot. We we I'm it, totally done for that. If the <laughs> asylum allows outgoing communication. Don't, don't break any rules. So I ran across yes. this, just kind of playing around. It's um, App Image Hub. Is it dot com? No, dot GitHub dot IO. All this business is going to be in our show notes along with everything else. It's a mm -hmm. crowdsourced. That's what got my attention. <laughs> Central App Image Directory. And, well, it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a place to go dig around for your app images. I think there's currently like 200 ish in there i just kind of want to give it a yeah. plug it's like all right th this is the thing we need things like this and uh however you know this implementation if you want to call it that could <laughs> use some work because it's missing things like bit. basic search functions um oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, how about that search box i could do some search box while going through mm -hmm. the website i i thought oh you know what maybe it's just the like the home page it's uh they just load everything up on the home page and if you click on the apps maybe they'll give you like a uh, little search box that you can no mm -hmm. no they don't no they give you a table <laughs> nope uh, that costs extra so yeah that needs some work with the searchability it's definitely not i remember why I, re I was looking for um a new i didn't want to build the new vlc from sauce mm-hmm I always get to that point. It's like, you know what? I'm done installing depths. Let's just, let's just get up. And I uninstalled Snap. And where's Snap image? Then I ran across this through my search. So, hey, if you're good with that, uh, UX design, web zone design, and go give my hand because we need something oh, yes. like that with the app images, you know, because there's the Snap repo. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's yeah. Snapcraft for snaps. There's the Flat Hub for flat packs. We need like a centralized thing for uh hosting all the app images mm -hmm. uh and yeah this could very well be it it just needs some work because um also they it, I, I can't help but feel like it was a missed opportunity to not release this as like an electron app 
as an app image <laughs> in a snap <laughs> in a flat <laughs> We can make it happen, people. We can make it happen. <laughs> J.A. Watson over at ZNet, ZDNet, uh, he took mm-hmm. not one, but five different Linux distributions for a spin on his brand new shiny HP laptop, which, what was it, 256 gig SSD, terabyte hard drive, uh, a couple of gigs of RAM, spec'd out 15-inch screen, HDMI, Bluetooth, Realtek, Ethernet, SD card reader, and touchpad mm-hmm. with, in all caps, real buttons. What did he try on it? Um, open Susie, the tumbleweeds, that's on the debate, Debian, Debane, however you want to do it. <laughs> Debane, yes. Debane, uh, don't Debane me about it, Debane. Manjaro, that's a thing. He gave that a spin. Fedora, mm-hmm. personal favorite, gave me a spin on that. Open Susie Leap. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. So he tried, uh, let's see. Open Seuss, mm-hmm. uh, Debian, mm-hmm. Manjaro, mm-hmm. Fedora, and Open Seuss. Mm-hmm. So he tried four distros, not five. Hey man, I'm just reading. <laughs> what, what are you? A, what are you a cop, man? <laughs> I, I mean, dude, you got like notes. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh yeah, I tried four distros on my new uh, laptop. No, you tried four. Hey, I, I, I tried Linux. Oh. Uh, I've installed six Linux, man. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he's going, yeah, he literally wrote an article about he installed like five different Linuxes, but there's only four. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. That's my sticking point with this article. That's it. <laughs> That's all I got. However you want to rock and roll with it. I, the only takeaway from this is go go read through it if you want, but... It's basically the headline should read breaking news. In 2018, Linux basically just works out of the box on laptops. Hmm? <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> what do we get up next, man? Well, up next, we have some Electron. It's our Electron news bit of the week. And it's free to. It's um an open source desktop YouTube player built with privacy in mind. Watch your favorite YouTube videos and uh, privacy concerns and things. So the way that they do it uh, is actually kind of interesting because it avoids the ads by pulling the video file directly and playing it over their own player. Uh, okay, so you're avoiding the ads, the you know, the uh, the whole supporting the creators thing uh, aside for a moment. If doing all that actually improves performance to the point where, say, you would be able to play a 1080p YouTube video on a 2009 uh, netbook, then I could see a use case for this. As it stands, it doesn't, because I tried it. Uh, and it's not... Uh, What's the point? Uh, it's YouTube in Electron. <laughs> I, I think the biggest push for this is allowing you to follow channels and make playlists and stuff like that without having a Google account because the Googles. <laughs> oh, yeah, Google is evil. You hear that, Google? The two Android phones, Android tablet. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, the microphone that's plugged into this PC running two different versions of Chrome. Yes. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> the, I, I got as far as I even left a comment on the Reddit. So I saw this on R-Linux, and thankfully, a brave soldier was in there. He's like, wait a minute, this is Electron. I wrote back, wait a minute, thank you for saving me that download. That's not going to happen. I don't need a web browser for my web browser. Uh, 100%. <laughs> but uh, yeah. maybe... Uh, Maybe you might want, might want to tap out on the like, hey, the people who spend a lot of time and make content and get pennies, literally $15 a month if we're lucky from YouTube. We found a way to... Here's a tip. If you want to bypass the Google stuff, make a throwaway Google account. Your life's going to be easier. Every Android, every desktop allows for multiple account logins. And mm-hmm. um, trust me, there's nothing you're doing Google's interested in. Okay? <laughs> Just dial the paranoia back just a little bit please yeah. okay <laughs> so pedro we are 100 percent nvidia shills that only use amd processors on our desktops 
<laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> I actually had someone call me that once on Twitter. I even got a screenshot. It's like, no, I'm running an AMD processor. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, 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 you Photoshopped that. I'm running Linux. But uh, no, we do run NVIDIA cards. And yes, we have said time and time again that until AMD pull a summer when it comes to their GPUs, we can't really uh, consider them an alter alternative. And NVIDIA, for the most part, they've been doing okay, except for the 390 series of drivers, because man, those are busted. And there have been numerous reports and numerous people complaining about performance and rendering issues like the uh, the topic at hand. Uh, there's the uh, like sort of black smearing slash tearing that happens on secondary displays. There's- uh, Oh man, come on, listen, this is five pages on, we're talking about the 390 drivers. Six. Six, six now <laughs> six pages radio silence aaron just get, listen aaron love you i know you um but yeah here's the thing you said you can't replicate it i need your system configuration so i can replicate your system so this expletive deleted starts working on this end because i'm stuck at 414 on this production box because yeah. i can't run the 390 <laughs> drivers the issues are real man that spin bug hard locks the box okay mm -hmm. That's a real issue. The flickering. I have experienced it on this end. So of all these people here. And I know it's not just because I run two of your NVIDIA products, which one being a 980, that thing wasn't cheap back in the day. And mm -hmm. uh, the display port on the UHD display, like clockwork, it resets it when it comes out of suspend, which stops my non-existent little heart organ every time because it's <laughs> a very expensive monitor. And you, your first thought's like, yeah, well, it died. Um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Let, let's I don't know. Wide. I honestly don't know how you possibly can't replicate this. There are enough people in that thread running every single card since uh, there, there's even someone with a, a GTX 6 something on it. And it's everyone is experiencing it, regardless of distro, regardless of whatever GPU they're using. It's the 390. If you're using the 390 dot whatever drivers, you're experiencing these issues. Mm -hmm. So again, like Ven already said, what are you running there, Aaron? Because I want to run that. Inquiring <laughs> minds want to know. <laughs> they also want to know what's up with Galley Linux, man, and why is it available in the Windows Store? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's something. I don't know. I honestly don't know about this. <laughs> We're excited to announce that you this. can now download and install Galley Linux via the Windows Store! Exclamation point. Our community expressed great interest. No, they didn't. To bring Kali Linux to WSL. I'm guessing that's short for Windows Store. I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, it's the Windows subsystem for Linux. Okay. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was uh, reading this at work, and I just started laughing out loud. And Dave was like, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Do you know Kali Linux? You mean, used to be called Backtrack? Backtrack, yes, yeah. Yes, the yeah. very same. I remember Backtrack. <laughs> I, I probably have CDs, not DVDs, CDs yep. with Backtrack on it. Yeah, that one is now available for you to install uh, on the Windows subsystem for Linux. And he's like, oh, you're kidding me. Nope. <laughs> so it's, okay, it's Windows, right? So if Microsoft keeps feeding the NSA information about their users, all the script kiddies using this are going to go away, right? Man, I don't know. I, it's just like, okay, m maybe now finally all the lead hackers can install Babby's first pen test distro in the, from the Windows store. I, man, okay. That's the thing. Just just be, be careful. I know Mike. There, there are definitely parts of Microsoft that are trying to be less smitey and dicky. We've established mm -hmm. that. Those people exist inside of Redmond. But there's still a gang of the old crowd hanging around, man. So watch yourself. Um, not necessarily Linux related, but seeing as we're now AMD shills after being NVIDIA shills, mm -hmm. uh, uh, there was a little bit of a leak, just a quick mention. So don't, don't get too upset, Strider, uh, about the Ryzen 7 2800X and some other bits of kit, the 1950, 1920, 1900. But no, the 2700, 2700X, 2600, 2400G, and the 2200 mm -hmm. with pricing availability to be believed. And um, looking at the 2700X and the 2600X uh, mm -hmm. at 249, 369 respectively, oh man, you, wait, 
Okay, is the prism cooler the one that blinks more? In it's it? the it's uh, yeah, it blinks uh, not just in red. It actually has the full RGB gamut. <laughs> so they want to charge me extra for that, or is that just to put an X on it? <laughs> it's the twenty seven hundred X. As far as we know, according to the leaks, it's the highest end Ryzen two part. And uh, according to the like the chart comparison, depending on the game on Windows, it is anywhere between eighty five percent to one hundred and fifteen or one hundred and twelve percent faster than the eighteen hundred X. So it is a noticeable improvement, which comes with higher clock speeds and higher TDPs, mm. obviously. Uh, but that's that just means that uh, AMD has uh, come to the point where they understand the Ryzen technology that they created and they feel comfortable raising the clocks and raising the temperature output just to make sure you get that bit extra performance. And if it never does, I know it never does. It's just me rooting for AMD to get Intel out of the market dominance. According to one of their graphs, they have like a little overlay between you have the Ryzen uh, 2700X and the i7 8700K. Mm -hmm. And you can see the i7 uh, spiking in certain games, but most others, it's right on par. And there's a sizable price difference between the two, so... uh, Well, well, don't worry. Once Dell gets a hold to them, they'll cripple them, like they've done with their recent laptop (laughs) offerings. um, Come on, Dell. (laughs) I'm just curious to see how this plays out in social media world, because, you know, we're a decade removed from the last time Intel did something this shady, not Dell. Mm -hmm. And, um, hey, that's the thing. I got to be honest with you, though, looking at some of the air quotes all over leaked benchmarks and that are totes being they're amd you know, benchmarks don't believe them and please uh, oh i'm talking about the ones that are, people have these products right oh now. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing yeah, samples yeah. and it's not that big of a night and day difference i i definitely mm-hmm. think these parts you know i'm sitting with a 1700 and you have a 1500 1600 1600, 1600. Yeah. not tempted to upgrade it's like no nope. mm, yeah, I'm, I'm good but if you're looking to build a ryzen system uh yeah 100 percent. go for, go for these or you know the 1700 1700x 1800x is, is yeah that's cheap. the other bit because if these come out and they turn out to be good mm-hmm. then the old parts get a sizable discount and you can get them for cheaper you can make it rain ryzen stuff <laughs> it'll be brilliant yeah hey uh let's give everyone a quick mention who supports this wacky little show oh, that yes. we do uh Sounds like something you might be interested in because we don't do the ads and stuff like that. Just LinuxGameCast.com. Boom, right on that support page. We got Amazon affiliate links. We got a wish zone where you can make us read out things, which I'm going to do in a hot second. Newegg, Humble. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, through Humble. We've raised over $100 through charity with you shopping through that link. We have PayPal yes. and Magic Internet money. But we do want to thank a couple of people this week. And this is the cool part because our latest patron, to join us, Betty. Hello, Betty. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello. And Mr. Matthew L, not it's C. It's the other Matthew. It's the other yes. Matthew. <laughs> the nice one. He has increased his pledge on Patreon. That's awesome. Jelly Bean picked us up uh, the lights, which I guess I owe everyone the... That. Yes, hit the button. Okay, there we go. Yeah, hit the button. That's a remote. <laughs> Still playing with that. That's not going to be 100% like sold shot. That I've just been busy yeah oons 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 right and uh that's kind of brilliant Th- thanks for that that's uh you do get to send in one of these uh if you pick anything up from the wish zone it's the high linux game cast enjoy your gift jelly bean so a little more tame than some of them but we are racing <laughs> racing towards our 250 dollars goal Oh, yes. Yeah, man. Could you, like, throw a couple of quarters at our head? Because then we're going to be bringing Jill on. You know her. You love her. Full time. All the time. And uh, that's going to be neat. Because they're also mm-hmm. out there right now. They've just picked up our leprechaun to oh, yes. do some coverage yes, they did. at scale. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> and I think if we can get the schedules worked out, until we can hit that 250, we're going to be bringing Jill on to kind of get everyone acclimated at the end of every month. So the last episode mm-hmm. of every month is going to be an interesting, interesting. We, we have to de de-giggle her. 
And don't worry, don't worry. We tried this procedure on Pedro. It didn't stick. So no, mm. no, <laughs> didn't work all that. But uh, yeah, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you want to help us crush that goal and get some cool stuff in return, including our crazy little Discord, which is terrifying. Oh, hang on, jeez, man, look at him. <laughs> There they are. Mm-hmm. There they are right now, <laughs> being being horribly irresponsible, which I fully approve of. Okay. They're socializing. What kind of Linux users are they? Oh. How, about, how about some cereal pie? Ooh, pie. Yes, we actually have the three this week. Uh, well, first off, we have someone who, um, well, he had a guitar, and he wanted to um, basically replace his... Uh, physical but limited amp and he wanted to add some effects to his electric guitar and turns out you have a pretty powerful computer in your pocket nowadays so he found a way to wire the um the guitar into a pie you use the orange pie not the raspberry pie yeah no 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 this is the orange pie it's one of the competitors and then wire the orange pie to a uh little wireless thingy which also drives their um, wireless direct headset. I guess that's Wi-Fi direct because he, he very specifically says wireless and not Bluetooth. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that's what he's using. And yeah, I'm not really music person, but that sounds neat. Well, it goes on and on and getting Jack and everything up and running. I mean, this has mm-hmm. been making it completely headless. For me, this was definitely more of the something that I really enjoyed about Linux and I still enjoy about Linux, but it was really prevalent way back in the day of like learning three or four different skills on your road, on your journey, figuring out how to do that one thing. And, Mm. uh, I like something like this. This will give you effects and all that. Didn't have the heart to tell the guy like the adapters (laughs) exist for a few quid to accomplish everything that he just, on that but that's it's it's all about the journey all about the journey yeah so this might be a little more useful this is the Pytex reader an easy to use document reader for impaired vision for people with impaired that's what they should say because impaired vision mm-hmm. doesn't need this uh the person with impaired vision <laughs> yes the abstract concept of uh impaired vision doesn't have ears yeah, man. they write a uh, Pytex reader allows for someone with impaired vision to read text from envelopes, letters, and other items. You basically stick it under it, it takes a picture using OCR and mm-hmm. generates and can't see. I want to use all these words that we're not allowed to use on Wednesdays, uh, <laughs> plops it out uh, using text to speech and one button control, mm-hmm. no internet connection required, less than a hundred quid and always ready to go and bonus. Oh, wait, cons. What? Wait, hang on. That's cons. Yes, there's pros and cons. That is not a con. Speech sounds like Stephen Hawking. That that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh, to some people, that's totally a bonus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, I. But it's a uh, it's a really interesting project. Um, I personally would have never thought of that because I'm one of those elitist douches who ha- has sort of okay uh, eyesight. My right eye is a lost cause, but my left eye is okay. Um, but this is great, and you actually brought up a, an interesting um, point of contention in the notes. This guy. Yes. This guy. Yeah. I, I brought up a use case. I'm good at doing stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. First off, the first thing everyone's going to do is feed it the XKCD <laughs> comic, Bobby Drop Tables. That, that's, <laughs> you, you just got to get that out of your system. But once you've done that, if you can get this thing to do foreign character recognition and translation, because mm-hmm. there there have been so many times I've had products that I've ordered that were just weapons grade Chineseium, and I just wanted to see what the original text said, if I could feed it that. Mm-hmm. And but that would be yeah. very handy. That is a very good uh it's a very good point. I did have a look uh, for the um like all the software that does speech, uh, text to speech on Linux. Mm -hmm. And there are quite a few that have a very good, um, uh, foreign language support, including bitmap fonts, like Japanese, Korean, what have you. Uh, it's, um, 
I guess it shouldn't be that much of an issue, but you know it's going to be an issue because the one person who actually needs it in, say, like, South Korea, they uh, they really want to get this to work for some member of their family, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, mm. that that sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, and fair warning, if you uh, expose it to Welch, it will explode on contact. So, please keep that in mind, LGC. Yeah, cares. stick to Shropshire. It's right there. Last but not least in the slice of pie is adding a Raspberry Pi inside a Numworks calculator, which just falls <laughs> under the equal 50% of why. All right, that's kind of neat. Because mm -hmm. I was reading through this, and it's like, yeah, you shoved a Raspberry Pi, and he got halfway through it, and he's like, yeah, you know what? It needs Wi-Fi. It's like, yes. <laughs> and it does. It's a Raspberry Pi Zero W. And it's that's not just a, a calculator shell for the Raspberry Pi Zero mm. W. That's an actual calculator with the Zero W um, soldered into the uh, SPI connector. And I, I was reading through this because it's like, oh, yeah, that's really neat. And I started reading through it and it's like, oh. Oh, you have to do a lot of maths. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to worry about interrupt cues. Okay. It's a very uh, nice yeah. package, and I think on our TSA yeah. acceptance factor, this, this is... This oh, is, that'll fly by completely unnoticed. As long as they don't <laughs> open the case. They open the case, you've got to have splitting to do. But yeah, you, oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're watching the video version, you can see it's very neat. Clean installation mm -hmm. with a Pi, a W, uh, with a Pi Zero. Did you use W? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a Pi Zero W for the wirelesses. I think it's kind of important. Uh, you know, there's no error handling if anything goes wrong mm -hmm. with the input. So this thing is just hard lock. Kind of respect that. Kind of do. Just so if bit. you don't get the RRQs right, mm -hmm. and yeah, no, that's just not going to work. <laughs> you speak to true, true. <laughs> Pedro, tell the people how they can get a hold to us if they want to uh, ask a question or tell us that we're really neat and awesome and they enjoy watching us on Wednesdays. I will never get that email. Why you would say that, I don't know. But if you really feel the need to, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form, make sure to pick LWDW. Yeah, I can't even say that. LWDW from the little drop downy form. It's really easy. The uh, CAPTCHA is probably going to have you do some maths too. Uh, I do apologize in advance for that, but yeah, it's there. You got to do it. Uh, it's uh, it's the best way that you have to get in touch with us. You can also leave comments on YouTube, on Google+, Plus, on Patreon. Uh, we will most definitely see and read those, but we will probably answer those right then and there, while if you send us some actual genuine feedback, you'll be featured right here, right now, and you'll not have been dropping the ball, because you did not this week. This week we had to recital one of the bits. Uh, recital? No, recycle. One of the bits from last week. See, what when, is going when, when on with my English? Pedro's not blaming the audience. <laughs> He's messing up the English. Um, <laughs> check this out. Andrew Y. This is our little bit we got for this week, though. He writes, he's like, hey, man, summaries and timeline, please. This is on last week's episode. Not every topic you talk about. See, Pedro, you're infecting me. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> every topic you talk about is not of interest for me. I'd love to be able to skip topics. Thanks. Uh, pro tip. If you would like to skip topics, use the fast forward button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh, there was someone who on our uh, Saturday show, actually, and I commend him, I do, I commend him for having the patience and the perseverance to stick it all the way to the end. And then the, that and elusive hero, the wanderer, um, to be known as Adventures of Frizo, appears to have taken yes. up. The voluntary role, <laughs> nay, position, as the official, unofficial LGC scribe of business. Because he didn't, he, she, Galgamac, I don't know, has outlined not one, but two Linux Gamecast weeklies. Maybe that'll make it over to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. I don't know. Oh, but yes. Here's a good point. If, if you're listening, Andrew, is... You can kind of ballpark it because I'm guessing you're watching the YouTube video. That's why you left a comment on YouTube. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm just guessing here. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, we, we do video because we do a live stream because we have a bunch of patrons and people who show up live mm -hmm. and we want to give them that. It's not a, we're not a YouTube show. Sorry. Not at all. Not even the slightest. 
So if you want to skip around, go over to our web zone. See, old people, we have these website things with these show notes, and you can mm-hmm. kind of pick out where the topics are by where it is in order. Mm-hmm. Or just kind of yeah, find- no, it's uh, it's the show notes. It's what they're there for. But uh, no, good on you, Adventures of Fraser. Mm-hmm. Good on you. <laughs> That, that was amazing. <laughs> keep that up. We'll make that official and put it in the, um, cause you know, theoretically if we don't have the budget to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but if you could just, just exercise caution because everyone who volunteers mm-hmm. time to this crazy project that we started five years ago gets put to work. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> all right. I think that's going to do us. I completely forgot to make it rain penguin. When we were doing the Ooh, plug segment, yeah, thank you everyone. At, I, I just wanted to get that in. Ha ha. Now, uh, we'll see you next week. It's been real. It's been beautiful. Time for the credits, which you're probably in. Right now. Hey, I'll put the music in there one day when I get tired. Of <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's still kind of amazing to think about. We've been doing this for so long mm-hmm. with the support of all these lovely people. It's like, it's been over two years. Well, you know, over two years. You know, maybe it, maybe we'd get more support if you you quit talking down to them and the feedback sucks. You'd be like, you got to do more. You got to send it. Come on, man. Yeah, I'm just asking them to you know uh, call us out, send some feedback, send some improvement, send some uh, something. All right. I like talking to you a lot. I'm it's gonna, uh, I'm it's send the reason feedback. I'm here. I'm going to send you some <laughs> feedback next week. It's not going to be pretty. Meh, fair enough. Ha, 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 ha.